everyone welcome back to this new video my name is tripti sharma and i am a first year medical student at faculty of medicine cairo university also known as kasral any today i'll be addressing the elephant in the room like many of you have been asking me about my admission procedure if i have come through a consultancy or not uh, the expenditure here the hostel like the study pattern and everything so yeah today we will be doing that and um, i have divided the video into separate time stamps um, so you can go and click the time stamp which appeals to your concern and if you need anything else please let me know uh, i'll try to help as much as possible from my side um, the main purpose of this video is just to create an awareness and uh, you know inform everyone like yeah this is the system and this is how it works uh, just so you're well informed and well aware also i do know that i am very privileged and i come from a family of privileges and i'm very blessed and thankful for that so yeah keeping in mind let's begin this so the first question which i would like to answer is um like you people have been asking me lately like if i have come to any consultancy or not uh the answer to that is no i have not come through any consultancy no agent was involved in my admission uh i got my admission done by myself i'll link the reference videos uh in the description down below for you all to go and check and see how the form is filled and stuff uh to begin with i made an account on the study in egypt website the official website on 23rd september and i filled all the details by 24th september as well and the details which they ask you are mainly about your passport and everything your um um school degrees college degrees anything else which you have you can even add your aptitude test um certificates as well and make sure you have a good um, how do i say like make sure you have good certificates to add like any ex, uh, activity certificates which are recognized on the national level and international level so it will be of great help and yeah also they ask you all the basic details about your nationality your passport they even ask your parents details their grandparents as well and if they have uh, any passport the details of their passport as well so yeah uh, after that i had to pay about 2000 egp which is equal to 8278 inr according to today's exchange rate um so you can assume the um fees is going to be anywhere between 8000 to 8500 inr depending on the exchange rates uh yeah i filled my university preferences they ask you to fill 10 university preferences i filled all of them and my first preference was cairo university and luckily i got cairo university i got my confirmation from cairo university on 30th september and after that you all know the story um my youtube video is already up uh, like how i came and everything so yeah after um you get the initial acceptance letter you have to go and submit your documents in the wafidin which is in nasser city so wafidin is basically an office for all the international students like no matter which college you are in you have to go and submit your documents there and basically all the documentation work is done there so they give you an amount of 14 days or something uh, it is written in the letter and in that 14 days uh, time duration you have to go and submit your documents uh, which will further be processed and yeah um i came here on 13th october and i submitted my documents that day itself also one more thing i'd like to add after coming to egypt i had my father's friends to help me here they helped me set up and everything um it is not impossible to get your admission done by yourself but it's like a little bit of advantage a tiny push like if you have someone who speaks local language which is arabic so yeah that was an advantage for me um okay so coming to the next question what is the fees of cairo university it is 7500 usd for the first year and 6000 usd from second year onwards okay the next question why did i choose cairo university over the others uh firstly to begin with it has a very nice reputation when you are willing to give a good amount of money then you want the reputation of the institute the college the university in which you are about to study 
to be good as well so reputation played a major role for me and then it is a government medical college it has a very good patient flow like i have myself seen the amount of patients coming in going out so yeah i know it has a very good patient flow next question do you have to qualify need for this not particularly they consider your standard 10 and standard 12 marks but if you have to uh, like if you plan on giving next exam going back to india and uh, setting your career back in india and everything so i think giving need exam plays a major role in your whole of medical career plus it serves as as an advantage like i don't think it will do you any harm if you qualify need it will literally just serve as an advantage so yeah they don't specifically ask for your need marks here but yeah if you attach your need marks it will be of great help what is the duration of the course it's 5 plus 2 5 years of studies and our um, clinicals start from third year yeah and two years of internship one year of internship is mandatory as far as i know uh, and the second year you can talk to the concerned authorities to make any changes if possible also like by the time uh, you graduate you should be ready for uh, all these new gazettes coming the new notices and information so you should keep an open mind to that uh, you never know what new changes they might have for you uh, so make sure you prepared for that as well now the study pattern so we have module systems here which is like very efficient as i find it like yeah according to me i find it very convenient and the subjects which we have in the first year are anatomy histology biochem physiology pharmacology and pathology total six subjects and mind you this is for the first year only yeah and uh, like there's a very good thing about your, our university it gives us an insight of what we have to study beforehand like we have our whole study guide for the year of 21 22 and we know how much each subject carries what marks and stuff so yeah that being said also do let me know like uh, if you want uh, me to explain the whole module system the study pattern i'll make a video for that because covering the whole system of studies in this video it's not possible it will be a very very lengthy video Uh, because i myself took some time to understand the module system here as it was very new uh, the module system has been introduced from the 2020 batch and um i took some time to understand the whole of it and let me know if you want some help in that as well that was my window uh yeah one more thing do we have compulsory attendance no we don't have compulsory attendance it's your wish to attend the lectures but it's mandatory to attend the lab sections like if you don't have the attendance of 75 or 60% in the lab sections they won't allow you to sit in the final exam so that's important okay now coming to the next question the expenses here everything here is expensive keep in mind like everything no matter the tiniest things it is expensive because you are looking at the exchange rate uh, in india uh, if something is for okay not in india in egypt if something is of 1 pound in india it's of 5 rupees so 1 into 5 everything is 5 times the cost but apart from that like if you don't keep in mind the exchange rate i find it's like it's pretty affordable if you have that much of money it's pretty affordable yeah that's it and the expenditure can vary from person to person if you have a lavish lifestyle mind you it will be much more than the cost that i live in right now so it can vary okay now coming to the next question uh, what about the food the food here is pretty great like yeah we have varieties of uh, food if you eat beef like for me i don't eat beef so for the people who eat beef they won't have any problem you get an absolute uh, like you know a whole different palette of food here but for me uh, like i eat only chicken and fish so i'm restricted to some things uh, and for the people who are vegetarian you will have to resort to cooking 
because I don't think uh, like on days when you decide to go outside, um, there are some places which do not offer the variety of food which you might be looking for. We do have vegetarian menu as well like falafel, fool, mahishi and some brinjal related dishes and they are pretty amazing like I love them. So yeah the food here is great. It's like you have to accommodate yourself to what you find here. Okay now. Do we get holidays on weekends? Yes, we do get holidays on weekends. But, 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 spoiler alert. The weekends here are Friday and Saturday. It's not Sunday and Saturday. It's Friday and Saturday. Uh, Fridays are a compulsory holiday because it's uh, the day of Jumma. So you're getting a holiday on Friday no matter what. Saturdays may or may not be a holiday depending on if you have lectures that day. So yeah. Do we get holidays for preparing for exams? Yeah, we do get holidays. Like for the end of module exams, we have been getting a holiday, uh, a preparatory leave for one week approximately. So yeah, we do get holidays for preparation. And uh, the year end exam, which I'm yet to give, uh, we are like, you know, we have been talking to the seniors and stuff. So we will be getting holidays. I'm not sure the number of days, but yeah, we will be getting preparatory leave. Now let's come to the next topic, which is the hostel facility. So the hostel facility is mainly for the native people, that is the Egyptians. And after that come the people with scholarships. And after that come the people who pay the fees and everything. So basically, okay, firstly, I'll say this. I have been informed about this by a friend. Uh, this is not my experience. I did not try getting a hostel room in the first place because I wasn't willing to compromise with my privacy. Moreover, the hostel for the girls has a curfew timing. So I wasn't ready to uh, like, if some days you, are, you want to go outside for a walk after eight. So it becomes a tedious work to, you know, convince your uh, authorities in the hostel facility and everything. So I wasn't ready in the first place. I don't live in a hostel. I live in an apartment which I share with the senior. Yeah. Um, okay, now coming to the next question. How is this city? Well, to begin with, the city is amazing. I have met amazing people, made some amazing friends, tried different kinds of crazy foods. So I am in love with the city, to be honest. And uh, about the people, uh, I believe like it's your energy which gets reciprocated back. So if you're good to the people, to the environment, to yourself, it's your energy that you get back. And uh, if you are not good, like your energy is not good, you can't really blame people for that, right? So the city and the people are really nice. They are friendly. Uh, like if you get stuck somewhere, I, there have been times when I have been stuck at some places because I didn't know which way to go and stuff. So I asked some people out and they really helped me. They showed me the ways like, yeah, you can go from here, from here. So people are really friendly here. They help you a lot. 10 on 10 on that. Next question, which country is better? For me, uh, I chose Egypt because at the time it was the COVID, like the post COVID era, everything was still opening. And uh, I had even enrolled myself uh, like my processing was halfway done for some universities in China as well. But my father got to know that the universities in China, they are not allowing students to come back from India. So he took a step back and then came Egypt. So if you ask me which country is good as in case of education and everything, I would say Egypt really justifies everything for me. And plus the fact that uh, my father had friends to look after me. So it was definitely an advantage. And one more thing. Someone asked, like, is Cairo University better or Ed Shams? That's a tough question, to be honest. Like, I don't want to uh, 
uh, be mean to any of the students, neither to the students of Kyle University, neither to the students of Anshams, because I have some friends there. I wouldn't want to mess this up. It entirely depends on which requirements you are looking for. Like Anshams, they do have hostel facility. So plus one point to Anshams in that. Kyle University, it does have hostel facility, but it's a long, tedious work. So it really depends on which points are you looking for and yeah students if you're watching this please mention which university is better just so everyone gets a little bit of you know help from you all and that's it. Do I get the time to roam around the city or the schedule is very hectic? Well we are in a med school i don't think we will be free any day soon the schedule is hectic it really depends like on some days it is less hectic less busy and on the other days it is more hectic and more busy so it's basically your time management for me i do get the time to roam around the city some days and some days not so it's basically your time management i would say that there are people who don't attend the university so yeah it's it's de uh, entirely dependent on you uh, and with this i think i have covered pretty much everything i hope this video isn't long like too long uh, and do let me know if you guys uh, want any other help like the main purpose as i have already told you is to make you guys aware like you know you should be aware also one more thing before this video ends i would like to add a special note if you are someone who is planning to come to egypt make sure you reach out to your seniors contact them ask them yeah this is the process you know i am from this place i uh, i don't eat this kind of food will i be able to get this food ask them for accommodations from now on only if you are planning to come to egypt it is of great help trust me like for me i contacted so many seniors on instagram i searched them i asked them like you know if i do this will it be possible to do that like i was a curious child uh, during my admission time so please 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 be curious and uh, no we don't uh, like no we are not taught arabic so that we can communicate with our patients if you are on scholarship the wafidin has some special programs for you uh, but for the uh, people who are not on scholarship you have to pay a certain amount to get enrolled in those programs so yeah you are not taught arabic here to interact with the patients and uh, also they don't prepare you for any other exams like i haven't seen anyone preparing for usmle or plab by the college faculty you have to prepare for these exams by yourself by your own willingness and just be curious just be keen enough to contact your seniors anyone who's in contact with you who has been to a different country uh okay